put it about wherever you like, but girls, we should tell them that it's wrong to have sex and it's disgusting. And, and then, yeah, and then all these like minor erosions, everything that comes up about doctor's signatures, about counselling, about these groups. We've now got uh, the, uh, the massive anti-choice group actually on the committee that makes these kind of decisions. We're basically just every inch of the way. We've got faith schools springing up everywhere and these free schools where the curriculum is not regulated. Pretty much free to teach whatever they like and what we're not seeing is that they're willingly and enthusiastically teaching the facts about women's bodies, the facts about pregnancy, contraception and abortion. No, they're teaching all kinds of unpleasant things. So we're just starting to see a real slew of attacks and we know with people like Nadine Doris that she really sees it as a reason in life. She doesn't have any other policies. It's not like she's, you know, pro, I don't know, forestry or, or anti-industrialisation or in favour of greater parking restrictions. She's just a one-woman, anti-woman machine, which is quite an achievement. Um, so it's not as if once we've dealt with these ones, there's going to be a, that's, that's it, we've won, everything's over, it's fine. There's going to be more to deal with. They're going to be back again and again, because as soon as, you know, the Conservatives are leading the government, she's in their party, this is her raison d'etre, that's what she lives for. So we're going to have to stay at it. Um, and actually, you know, not only do we need to win this and keep winning it and keep fighting it, we actually also need to, to improve the situation. Right now, women in Northern Ireland pay the same health, they pay the same taxes as the rest of us. They are unable to access less health care because they can't get an abortion when they need a want one. Um, we've still got this situation where women need two doctor signatures. We've still got anti-choice groups setting up helplines where they're not clear what they're offering and actually you ring them up and say, I'm looking for an abortion, they'll tell you you're going to burn in hell. It's an ongoing battle. There's lots more to be won and there's lots that we mustn't give up. Um, so yes, if you're watching this, I would urge you to join Abortion Rights. Go to abortionrights.org.uk and become a member. It doesn't cost very much. It's like 20 quid, 5 quid for students. And then you'll be on our mailing list. you find out what's coming up. I'm sure there's going to be more attacks. I'm sure there's going to be more occasions and we're going to need people to come down and join a protest or write to their MP or send a message one way or another. Send something out on Twitter, Facebook, however it is that you communicate with your people. And, uh, and yeah, we really need your support and your help. So uh, please join abortionrights.org.uk. Thank you very great. much. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. What does the, the phrase pro-choice mean to you? Well, in this context, we're talking about a woman's right to choose about what happens to her own body, which is the weirdest, weirdest thing. Like, I don't know, let's imagine that uh, I have kidney failure and you're a blood match and you could donate a kidney. Is it my right to take your kidney? No, of course not. It doesn't really matter um, what impact it has on anybody else, whether it's the fetus, whether it's the partner in your life or other members of your family or the church you belong to. It doesn't really matter. Ultimately, we would always say, if you don't want to give me your kidney, you don't have to. We would always say, no, that's your body. You have complete autonomy over it. It would be ridiculous to say anything else. And in every other area of healthcare, we have complete autonomy. You know, you want to go into the doctors and say, actually, I don't want laser eye surgery you can say that I don't want this treatment I do want that treatment you can always refuse treatment you can always demand treatment if there's something you really feel that you need this is the one place where it's under threat and, it's, and it comes out of straightforward misogyny because we sort of think men know what they're doing and they can make their own choices but women the poor delicate little flowers you're gonna need some help the government David Cameron should tell you what to do with your body well he shouldn't I should because it's my body and you know he doesn't have a uterus so as far as I'm concerned his opinion on the situation is of no interest to me whatsoever. So what would you say to those groups who say, no, it's a baby? How would you sort of respond to that? Well, I, fine, so it's a baby. I mean, I, like, I really don't care. Like, I don't use that terminology myself. I use embryo, I use fetus, because that's the correct terminology. But, all right, call it a child. Let's call it a child. And let's assume that you have to donate, um, you know, resources from your own body well, to support that child. Well, no, you don't have to if you don't want to because it's your body and ultimately my rights as a human being over my body supersede those of any other person including one growing inside me doesn't matter if you see that as a fully formed person now that said the truth is that the vast majority of abortions happen so early in pregnancy that we're literally talking about a cluster of cells um, it's yeah I mean it, it's, it's interesting that these very same groups that are anti-choice are not the groups who are out there making it easier 
to get your unwanted child adopted. They're not the same groups that are promoting widespread contraception and high quality sex education. The idea that these groups are trying to help women or something like this, it's ridiculous. These are groups that think sex is wrong and disgusting, especially when women do it. So, I heard earlier from, from another person here today that, uh, that uh, in the law at the moment, reasons why they don't want to raise a child. Absolutely, relief. The problem's over. You don't have to worry about it. The truth is that the vast majority of women have their mental health enormously aided by being able to access abortion. 10% of women who carry a child to term suffer postnatal depression. So we could equally argue, you know, that the choice to continue with the pregnancy is one that has mental health complications and one that you may go on to regret. I think ultimately what we have to say is even if you're going to regret your decision, it's still your decision. So, uh, in your continued fight to make abortion more easily accessible for more women, um, what would you say your goal is? What's your end goal? For me, it, should, it shouldn't be an issue. There shouldn't be a law that says when you can and cannot have an abortion. The law should be that if a woman wants an abortion, she goes and asks her doctor for an abortion and is given an abortion. I mean, the only reason not to give a woman an abortion is if the doctor believes that it's medically unsafe to do so, if she's not well enough to go through that procedure. Now with early abortion it's very unlikely that that would be the case. With occasion that might be the case with later term abortion. That's the only possible reason that a doctor should advise against it. And even then you want to take the risk that that's your choice because it's your body. The same token if you want to go hand gliding and not bother attaching your ropes properly, well that's your choice. I would strongly advise against it but you make your own call because it's your body. Okay brilliant, thanks so much. 